Hi guys, it is Brian here from DrawingBlends.com and I am once again about to be joined by my co-host Angela Dahlgren to discuss yet another Harry Potter movie. We're more than halfway through now. This is Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire that we will be talking about today. If you are watching this later on our YouTube channel, we recorded this one live on our Facebook page. We are looking for ways to do more live stuff on our YouTube page. You may have seen I did a live chat there last week, which uh, went really well. So we will look to do more of that. The only problem, we can't figure out how to do the two-person chat on, uh, on YouTube yet, but we are working on it. If you are new to this at all, we will be talking about Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire specifically. Uh, that is the fourth book, fourth movie in the series. And we will not be spoiling anything that happens after so if you're watching for the first time or reading for the first time uh we will not spoil anything that happened after goblet of fire we will spoil everything of course up to goblet of fire hello angela how are you hello how are you i'm good very good you are loud today at least in my headphones which okay. no it's I'm... probably not you it's probably okay. my headphones that are let me turn it down that are too but um I can never tell volumes. They don't give us anything to see volume I on know. here. So. Let me know if I'm too loud, everyone, and I can turn it down. Um, or yes. if I'm too loud. I'm usually too loud. So <laughs> I know. Normally, I'm the quiet one. Anyway, uh, gosh, I feel, I feel like we're so awkward today. It's like we haven't done this in a while. Okay. Well, I think, I think part of it was because I kind of forgot it was Thursday until like <laughs> last night when you asked me what time we were doing this. <laughs> So I, know. And I thought, oh, no. So I had to watch the movie. I, def I finished reading the book last night. I watched the movie at like five o'clock this morning because I hadn't seen it. I I've seen it recently. I, I, I know I've said this at a bunch of the, the start of these, but my kids are interested in watching my daughter specifically. So we've been I've been watching them with her. So we just saw Goblet of Fire. Um, well, we just finished Order of the Phoenix, so we just saw Goblet of, Goblet of Fire like maybe two weeks ago. So mm -hmm. it was already kind of fresh, but I wanted to to watch it again, obviously. So yeah, I watched it yesterday. Yes, during nap time. Oh, well, your nap time or? <laughs> well, during the kids' nap time, I didn't watch all of it during nap time because that would have been a really long one, which <laughs> yes. I would have preferred. But I watched most of it. So um, yeah. So, but. Yeah, <coughs> so we're going to talk about that today. We're going to give you a summary of it. Mm -hmm. um, not a lot at the theme parks relate to this movie, right? Brian? No, although I missed a fairly big one about Prisoner of Azkaban two weeks ago when we talked. So I'll um, I'll mention that as we as we get to that part. But um, so we have now watched what five movies in this, this is, marathon? This is the fifth one, in, including uh, Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them. Yeah, so yeah. And there are. There are what? There are four more movies to go. So let's see. One, two, three. Yeah, we only got four more movies. So you guys, yeah. we are over halfway done. If you are doing this with us, if you are watching this and you are doing the rewatch with us, please do a thumbs up. Um, we'll wait for a few more of you to join us before. Yeah, we... not too many people watching right now, but we also didn't really promote this one. So we did not could, at uh, all. <laughs> that probably hurts a little bit. That probably has something to do with the fact that like we didn't even decide what time we were doing this till like yeah, this 10 30 last yeah. night. Yeah, pretty much. So, so if you're watching this later on Facebook, we apologize. We will. Um, we do have the schedule. The next one, I believe the next one is the one that is, is going to be a little more than two weeks, right? We're going to do that on, on, um, yes, July on, uh, 9th, July 9th, because you are going to be in Walt Disney world and universal Orlando, uh, yes. in within the next two weeks. So, yeah, um, I'm going to have a lot more to actually share when it comes to the theme park, the wizarding world of Harry Potter, because I'll finally been there so far. It's yeah. just been Brian. So I've been the one asking him questions, but I will hopefully have more of an insight after this. Oh yeah. Oh, you, yeah. you most certainly will. So, all right, before we go into any of that stuff, um, let's do the summary. I thought about actually just skipping the summary this time, but I, I figured, well, if people haven't watched it recently or anything, it might help to to spur memories. And this one actually isn't as complicated as some of the other ones. So, No, um, and it kind of also, again, much like Prisoner of Azkaban, jumps right into it. Oh, yeah. There are there are some, some pretty significant cuts. This was in... Uh, at the time, this was the, the thickest book 
of the series, uh, yes. which would be passed by the next one, um, which, which we'll talk about. But this was um, probably the biggest deal as far as like a midnight release too. You know, where people oh, were yeah. lining up at Barnes and Noble mm -hmm. at midnight, getting the book. Um, people were pre-ordering. This was like when Harry Potter really started to become a huge deal. Hi, Danya and uh, Danya's entire hair salon, apparently. So uh, Danya says this is her least favorite book, um, which I, I find uh, to me that's surprising. Um, we'll talk about my least favorite book next time. Um, but um, Goblet of Fire, at this at the time it came out, was my favorite one by by quite a bit. I liked Prisoner of Azkaban a lot. I really, really liked Goblet of Fire. Now it's probably um, it's probably still in my top three, I think. I'm not sure whether it would be number two or three. Prisoner of Azkaban may have passed it in time. Mm -hmm. um, my favorite one is Half-Blood Prince, but, um, but I still really, really like this one a lot. The movie, um, the movie is fine. I, it, it's, it's a good movie, but I guess we'll talk about that. You know, so let's, should we, go through, should we go through our summary? Yes, and I also want to say hi to Paula and Stacy before we do the summary. So hello, thank you for joining us as well. All right, so got Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire. We start with this one, not with Harry Potter, but with a man named Frank Bryce, although I'm not sure they ever actually say his name in the, in the movie. Um, mm -hmm. He is the old man that is spying on Voldemort and Peter Pettigrew, also known as Wormtail, and another as yet unknown man. Um, Harry, it turns out Harry is seeing this in a dream, which is more of a vision. He wakes up with his scar hurting. Afterwards, he attends the Quidditch World Cup uh, with the Weasleys. Their game is between Ireland and Bulgaria. After the game, Death Eaters, which are Voldemort's supporters, terrorize the camp. And the unknown man who appeared in Harry's dream is there and summons the Dark Mark, which, the Dark Mark, which is the symbol of Lord Voldemort. Once they're at Hogwarts, Professor Dumbledore introduces Mad Eye Alistair Moody, and he's the defense against the dark arts teacher. He's also an Auror, who kind of, they are the people who go after the bad wizards. Um, he announces that the school will host the legendary event known as the Triwizards Tournament, in which three magical schools compete by facing three dangerous challenges. The Goblet of Fire selects champions to take part in the competition, which are Cedric Diggory of Hufflepuff, Hufflepuff, who represents Hogwarts, Victor Crumb representing Durmstrang Institute, and Fleur Delacour representing, oh my gosh, Brian, why'd you give me this name? <laughs> I, well, I you, can't say. I don't, I, I don't I think you can school. say it wrong. I, I believe. You, you Batten? It, I believe it's probably supposed to be pronounced Bobatons, but oh, in Bobatons. the movie, they very clearly say Bobatons many okay. times. So I, I don't think right. you can go wrong exactly with how you say it. <laughs> I said right the first time. <laughs> Bo Batten's Academy. The Goblet unexpectedly chooses a fourth champion, which we all know is Harry Potter. Dumbledore cannot pull the underage Harry out of the tournament because under this wizarding law, Harry has to compete. Um, and the ministry official, Barty, Pouch, Barty Crouch Sr., says that he has to do it. Now, the first task of the Triwizard Tournament, each champion must retrieve a golden egg guarded by a dragon. Uh, Harry and all the other champions succeed in catching the egg, which contains information about the second challenge. Shortly after the first challenge, an event called the Yule Ball, which is a formal dance, takes place. Harry has a crush on a, a, uh, a Ravenclaw girl named Cho Chang, who he asks, but she is already going with Cedric, the Hufflepuff champion. Hermione Granger attends with Victor Crumb, making Ron jealous on uh, both counts, we'll find out. During the second task, the champions must dive underwater to rescue their friends from the merpeople in the lake. Harry comes out in third place, but is placed second behind Cedric due to his moral fiber after saving Flora's sister, Gabrielle, as well as Ron. Afterwards, Harry discovers the corpse of Barty Crouch Sr. in the forest. Later, while waiting for Dumbledore in his office, Harry discovers the pensive... Uh, another word that I may be pronouncing incorrectly, which holds Dumbledore's memories. Harry witnesses a trial in which Igor Karkaroff, Durmstrang's current headmaster, confesses to the Ministry of Magic names of other Death Eaters. Igor Karkaroff is a former Death Eater. When he names Severus Snape as one, uh, Dev uh, Dumbledore vouches for Snape's innocence, saying that Snape turned spy against Voldemort before Voldemort's downfall. As Karkaroff names Barty Crouch Jr., 
A devastated Barty Crouch Sr. imprisons his own son in Azkaban. Exiting the pensive, Harry realizes the man he saw in his dreams is one Barty Crouch Jr. For the final task, the champions enter, enter this hedge maze, and it's huge, and they must reach the twi- Why can't I talk today? The Triwizard Cup. <laughs> it's early. I know, it is. Crumb, Victor Crumb, under the influence of the Imperious Curse, which we never really talked about, but we will, um, mm-hmm. stuns Fleur. After Harry saves Cedric, the maze, after the, when the maze attacks him, which is in the movie if you watched it, the two claim a draw and they grab the cup together, uh, which turns out to be a port key, something that we didn't talk about, which we will. Mm-hmm. And this port key transports them to a graveyard where Peter Pettigrew, or Wormtail, and Voldemort are waiting for him. Wormtail kills Cedric and performs a ritual that gives Voldemort his body back, who then summons the Death Eaters. Voldemort releases Harry in order to beat him in a duel to prove that he is the better, better wizard. Which is like, I mean, like, Harry's like 14. Why does Voldemort <laughs> yeah. feel he has to prove that? Because it's unable, Voldemort, yeah. I know. Like, unable to defend himself, Harry tries the Expelliarmus charm, which would basically take Voldemort's wand. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, Harry tries the Expelliarmus charm at the same moment that Voldemort attempts the killing curse. The beams from their wand... in entwine or connect and Voldemort's wand reveals the last spells it performed the spirits of the people he murdered materialize in the graveyard including Harry's parents and Cedric Voldemort and his death eaters are distracted which allows Harry to escape with Cedric's body and grabbing the port key which brings them back to Hogwarts and you mentioned a couple of things in there that we haven't mentioned yet a lot of, we'll get to the a lot of this stuff because a lot there is a lot that comes up in this book and film that will be important later yes. uh, for the end of end of Goblet of Fire Harry tells Dumbledore that Vol- Voldemort has returned and has murdered Cedric Professor Moody takes Harry back to his office to inger- interrogate him about Lord Voldemort but Dumbledore Snape and McGonagall intervene and subdue Moody realizing that he's not really moody the teachers force moody to drink verita serum Ver- uh, god there's a lot of words we also may Verit- not be pronouncing serum. Verit- yeah, i don't know a truth telling <laughs> potion and he reveals that he is barty crouch jr who returned to azkaban who was returned to azkaban i, I guess that's what wikipedia said although mm-hmm. i'm not sure they actually said that dumbledore reveals to the students that voldemort murdered cedric diggory Later, Dumbledore visits Harry in his dormitory, ab- apologizing to him for the dangers he endured, which he might as well keep doing. Harry reveals that he saw his parents in the graveyard soon after Hogwarts, Durmstrang, and Bobatons fid- bid farewell to each other. Um, and that's the, the end of the movie. Yeah. Uh, the book does end differently, which we'll get to at the end. But uh, yeah, the names, this is the first one where um, there's a lot of names in here that I read for, for years before seeing the films. So some of how I pronounce things don't always jive. Bobaton, yeah. I'm almost positive because Bobatons is supposed to be in France. I'm almost positive that it is not pronounced Bobatons, but that is the way that Dumbledore says it in the film. So... Who know? And J.K. Rowling was a consultant on all of these, so I'm sure she would have said something if it was yeah. it, w- it was completely wrong. But um, so so what uh, what are your feelings about the book and, and the, the the movie? Here is the uh, the DVD cover in this one. Love, there is some good hairy hair happening in that on that cover right there. Oh. But we have uh, we have this the is. Hair. Uh, this uh, right there is Floor Cedric, played um, by um, uh, Robert, sorry, what's his Pattinson. Name? Robert Pattinson. Thank you from Twilight series. Back there is that Crumb. Yeah, there is Victor Crumb back there. Of course, Ron and Hermione. Um, the back of this one there is Ma- Alistair Mad Eye Mooney, played by Brendan Gleeson, uh, which is funny because his real life son Donald Gleeson will go on to play Bill Weasley in later films. Um, but oh, um, I didn't know and, that. One other funny thing about this DVD, it came with this insert um, that was this, the DVD was released at least I think in 2005. So before the Wizarding World opened and this is all, it's what you can buy wands, you can buy um, these, this pretty cool ornament set in there. They have like, they had already realized by this point how much you could pay for some of this stuff. There is like a Hogwarts model somewhere. Oh, there it is. There is the, uh, the model of Hogwarts that you could buy for $295. <laughs> Which I'm um, sure people did. A time turner. We spoke about the time turner in the last movie. That's it right there. So this was oh, all stuff you could picture. buy 
before you could um, before you could get it from the gift shops in the Wizarding World. So what did I think about the books and the movie mm-hmm. you asked? Uh, it's definitely the darkest that we have. Um, to date, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely the darkest. It's definitely the longest book. I think it was over 700 pages at the time. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, it was extremely long, and it definitely represents J.K. Rowling's attention to detail when she's writing. Um, so, yeah, definitely... If you are not a reader, but you want that detail and that knowledge, I definitely go for the audio book. Then you can can listen to it while you're cleaning or driving in the car if you have a commute. Uh, That's definitely an option for you. Oh, hello, Pam. Thank you for joining us. Oh, and speaking of your merchandise, Danya said that she got Cho's wand when she was at um, Universal Orlando. Uh, I I, I, I do like Cho Chang, and the, the actress is accent is is uh is very i, I oh, very so much cute. enjoy that that like scottish accent i think she's i assume she's scottish i don't i don't know but uh um i i really really like the accent on that one. yeah it's it's just it is very dark and i remember reading it and i you know i was fairly young um mm-hmm. i think my parents were on vacation so we were staying with my cousins and um or on uncle. And I remember that's all I did for the whole week. I think I read it in four or five days because it had just come out. And I, I remember some parts really did scare me because it was the darkest book I had really mm. read at that point. Um, but yeah, what do you guys think? I, I want to hear your thoughts in the comments. What- and good. I was right. I had to look it up because I want to make sure Katie Loing is, uh, is Scottish. She was born in Motherwell, in Scotland. So yeah, it was also in, uh, was also in the, in the sequel to train spotting apparently. I don't know what that is. Train okay. Is that, uh, uh. Never mind. Um, <laughs> but um, yeah, in this book uh, of the of the movies we've done so far, this is the one where there is a lot more detail in the book. Not necessarily yes. plot points so much, Mm-mm. but a lot of background detail. And and we'll go over some of it here. So if you haven't if you haven't read the book, I'll we'll mention it. Um, some of, just some extra color and. This one was tough, I imagine, from a screenwriting perspective, because there is a lot of a lot of stuff that you just you can't make. It's already a two hour and 38 minute movie, I believe. So you don't want to make a three and a half hour Harry Potter movie. But um, so I, I understand that they had to cut some of the stuff. But then there's. But there is there is some background detail that I, I think would have would have helped out the movie. Not that I think it's a bad movie. I actually enjoy this is one of the movie this the last two, Prisoner of Azkaban and Goblet of Fire, are, are, are two of the ones they enjoy the most, actually. Um but um but it, it does there are parts that feel real rushed and, and starting at the beginning. I mean it jumps from his dream to going to the Quidditch World Cup in about forty five seconds. I feel mm-hmm. like you know, something that would have been cool was to show the actual game of the Quidditch World Cup. I know yeah. why they didn't do it. They didn't do it because no one in the Quidditch World Cup were characters that you knew yet or knew yeah. at all. And it wouldn't have been relevant. It would have been really cool to watch from a wizard perspective to see what real Quidditch players, you know, how they play and everything. Yeah. But we didn't know the players and they weren't No, I mean, the story. Victor Crumb is the only one that, that even really comes back. But, and you um, don't know why he's important. And at, at that point, you don't know that he'll, yeah. he'll come back. What I actually would have liked to see in the book, they, there's a, a pretty long part where they arrive at the campsite and, um, and there's a bunch of other wizards. They see other, other kids they go to school with. Um, of course, you know, Seamus, Seamus uh, Finnegan, is that his last name? I think it's Seamus yeah. Finnegan, um, mm-hmm. who is Irish. And Ireland is participating in the World Cup, so his like whole family is there. And the Irish Irish are going nuts, and um, you know they're talking about you know some wizards that have these crazy big tents and gardens and kids yeah. on little on little broomsticks zooming around. And I would have actually like m- rather to see more of that, just mm-hmm. to to place it a little bit more in the world and make it seem like that. One of the the nice things that Goblet of Fire does is it expands the world quite a bit. You, you are introduced to two other schools of magic and you see, see uh, students from outside of Britain. And, um, and I think doing that would have actually helped even expand the, the movie further, which I was kind of disappointed because they really just get there and there's a, a really rehearsed piece with uh, the Weasleys talking about Victor Crumb and then mm-hmm. Death Eaters come and, and that's basically it. Yeah. Um, 
So it, I, I, that the whole thing feels really rushed. That's I really like the Quidditch World Cup part of the book. Um, yeah, then they really don't use any more of it. than that. Yeah, yeah, I mean, or the fact you know that the tent, even though this is a very minor part, but you kind of touched on it really briefly. But the fact that the tent, their tent, was borrowed. Um, mm -hmm. But that was like from Perkins the, at the office. Yeah, yeah, from Perkins at the ministry. But that's like one of the like least nice tents. You know, there are some tents that are like mansions on the inside. Yeah. A very tiny detail, but it just gives you a comparison of like magic. And it's those kind of yeah. insider scoops that, you know, us as muggles would like to see what <laughs> magic can do. But I mean, Harry kind of gives that insight to us when he walks in and says, you know, I love magic. So, yes, it's rushed, but. They do touch on that, so yeah. You know, I mean, they they, they, they mention it. They things. they change a lot, and and I don't know. I guess we I guess we'll talk about it more towards the end. But uh, they change a lot of the story with Barty Crouch Jr. Um, the entire background of how he got to be uh, be um, as uh, to Hogwarts as Professor Moody is different in the book than it is in the movie, and in the movie it. It doesn't, one, it doesn't make a ton of sense. And two, they give it away real, real early in the movie, mm -hmm. um, which I, I don't understand the choice there. I understand maybe not wanting to go through the whole background because for one, it heavily involves another house elf, uh, like mm -hmm. Dobby, the elf we met back in Chamber of Secrets. Yeah. Uh, there's Winky, which is the Crouch's house elf that comes. So I can understand not wanting to do all of that. I mean, it probably cost them a fortune at that time in the mid 2000s to, to CGI animate a uh, character that, you know, for that many scenes. But, um, but the give, them giving it away doesn't make any sense to me because Barty Crouch Jr. in the movie appears in Harry's very first dream that opens the movie. This is the first of the movies, I believe, that we don't open with Harry. Uh, mm -hmm. It is not the first book. Sorcerer, the, very, the first book, Sorcerer slash Philosopher's Stone, does not open with Harry in the book, but it does in the movie, I, I think, if I remember right. <laughs> um, but, um, but in the book, uh, Barty Crouch Jr. is not in that room with Voldemort and Wormtail. Uh, he is in, in the movie. And then they do that weird tongue flick thing, which one oh, is, is a little gross. It's just creepy. But, but also is, is the dead giveaway. I mean, we see in consecutive scenes, we see Barty Crouch do it in the flashback in the pensive. Mm -hmm. And then we see uh, Professor Moody doing it while, you know, talking to, to Barty Crouch Sr. So I, I, I just don't understand why they wanted to give that twist away. Maybe Halfway it's the through kid, the movie? The kid focus. Maybe they figure more kids are watching but they're, it. But they're about to murder a 17-year-old in the, in the <laughs> movie. So I'm not sure that kids are, are the number one audience anymore. Um, well, well let's, um, let's go to some comments because we've, we've okay. gotten a few. Um, John said, this is our favorite movie, but agreed on the parts being rushed. So definitely agree with you, Brian. Uh, Joanna, uh, Joanna, I wish they'd put the part about the wizard in the muggle woman's nightgown <laughs> in the movie. Oh, my gosh. I completely forgot about yeah. that part. Yeah, there's a oh lot of jokes gosh. about about the wizards dressing because they're, <clears throat> excuse me, they're supposed to dress in muggle clothing and look non-conspicuous. And uh, they, of course, don't really know what muggle clothing is. So there is one that is just in a nightgown. And, you know, he said, he's talking to another wizard and he's saying, well, I bought it in a muggle store. And he said, well, yeah, it's for muggle women. Um, and then he, there's a joke, I believe, in the book about the, the, wind, the wind blowing around his bits or something like that. <laughs> there's a, a similar joke like that in the, in the book that, yeah, that it is, it is funny. I clearly need to reread this book now. Oh, my gosh, I completely forgot that. Pam says, I agree. I was sorry that they didn't add that part to the film. I wanted to see the part when they arrive at the campsite. So this is kind of referring back to the Quidditch World Cup scene and them getting settled at the campground. And Holly said, my husband and I joke that they spend all the budget on the dragons, and that's why there's no Quidditch. And the maze and the lake tasks are underwhelming. Yeah, the, the, that, that makes a lot of sense because they added a lot more dragon and a lot yes. less maze in in the movie compared to what was in the book. Um, it was very extended too. The the dragon scene. Um, very extended. Like it's one of those that every time I see, like I know that they do extra with the dragon in the movie, but it, when I see it, I always am shocked at how long it goes on for. And I always yeah. picture. I always like to picture everybody else in the stadium, like like, like Dumbledore. What is like, he? He's where's the Harry? dragon. The dragon breaks off its chain and flies after Harry, 
and everybody else is just like, oh, they're like, I guess we'll see we where go this goes. Him? Yeah, because they should, in, should we maybe check on him in the book? They specific well, there's a couple characters that that are introduced in the book that they don't have in the movie. Uh, one is Charlie Weasley, the second mm-hmm. oldest Weasley brother, who is mentioned in the movie. But he doesn't appear in it. I believe he appears later in the movies, I think. Mm-hmm. Um, in, in the book, both Bill and Charlie are introduced um, you know, on page to, to Harry in this one. But, um, um, but Charlie specifically says that there will be dragon handlers present with extinguish- in- extinguishing spells at the ready. So, I mean, there, it's not like the, the, the champions are completely up to their own devices. They, they don't want them to die. But and that's yet the, thing. Like yet the say, dragon like flies off and everybody's tournament. just like, mm. yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. And, and, but it just, it just, I, I just love thinking like that for five minutes, everybody's just sitting in the stadium going, Hmm, I wonder if they're coming back. You know, there's there's kind of a parallel there between that and then one of the final scenes in the very last movie with Harry and Voldemort, which I'm not going to go into. But it like, do you know that scene when they're kind of like off doing their own thing and everyone's like, "Where's Harry?" Oh yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Anyway, um, but it's probably just meant to enhance the fact that it's the Hungarian horntail and it's the hardest dragon, and it's like. Well, I think they just wanted an action scene is yeah. all it was. I mean, they, they thought it would be exciting to do. Um, one other character before we, we skip too far ahead, uh, Ludo Bagman, um, Ludovic Bagman as a character in the book that is not in the movie at all, um, not in any of the movies going forward. And it mm-hmm. makes perfect sense. He is not a necessary character. He's, he's basically there as one, a red herring, to make you think that maybe it's him that put Harry's name in the Goblet of Fire because yep. he was loosely associated with the Death Eaters, although he wasn't one. He is a former beater for the Wimborne Wasps, a pro, uh, a pro Quidditch team in England, and is now a ministry official. But he's the one in the books that does like announces and uh, all the stuff, and he's one of the judges, and he's a guy that everybody kind of likes, even though he's not particularly good at his job. <laughs> so. Um, but that's one that, that I um, honestly didn't really notice until this time that he wasn't even in the movie because he doesn't, he isn't necessary. So yeah, that was one cut that I was like, oh, okay. Well, well and I guess that applies to Winky too. You know, if Winky's not going to yeah. be in future movies, then why? Yeah, and she's real. She, she is in future books, but, but not relevant loose, very, that. yeah, very loosely. Yeah. Um, but um yeah, so, oh, so I guess we're up to the Goblet you know, of talking, Fire now, right? Yeah. Yeah, let's talk about, you know, the Bobatons and the Durmstrang schools. Um, do they have any part in the Wizarding World of Harry Potter parks at all? Uh, barely now. The um, Hogsmeade, the, the original Wizarding World that is in Islands of Adventure, is supposed to be set in time somewhere around this movie, Goblet of Fire. Okay. So um, I think they've loosened up a little bit on that since it opened, but you can still see they do have the, um, the Triwizard Spirit Tournament, which is basically the way they enter the Bobaton and uh, Durmstrang students where the girls are, you know, kind of do the the dance and um, yeah. I believe they use ribbons in the actual show at universal yeah. and then the Durmstrang boys have the sticks and everything. So there is like um, a little show. Yeah. And they do a show where they do, you know, do choreographed dances and things like that. And the former dueling dragons attraction, uh, which was then dragon challenge when it was rethemed to, to Harry Potter, that was basically set as the first task in uh, in the Triwizard Tournament. So the oh. two coasters were named the Hungarian Horntail and the Chinese Fireball, which are two of the four dragons. And as you went through the queue, you went past the Goblet of Fire, you went past the, or I don't remember if you went past, I know you went past the Triwizard Cup. You, um, there were banners up, there were signs for the different champions um, and, you know, things like that, that you, that, and then you went and, you know, fought the dragon kind of thing. Um, now that is gone. That is, uh, going to be the new, the new roller coaster that, um, that kind of pulls elements from various movies. A lot of the first movie, actually, I don't know if you have seen, there are tons of spoilers out there, uh, about what the new roller coaster is going to be. If you listen to the 
unofficial guide Disney dish podcast with uh, Jim Hill and our boss, Lenny Testa. Um, you know, and that, of course, you should listen to that after you listen to the touring plans podcast with Angela and I, but, um, but they just did an episode on the, the new coaster and it's going to have uh, fluffy, the three headed dog from the first uh, book and movie. It is going to have a part where you are caught in devil's snare, which uh, you, you see in, in the first movie. So um, there's going to be a lot of stuff from that. There's supposed to be a, a big Hagrid animatronic and lots of, of other little stuff um, there actually. And while I'm talking about stuff from the past, I mentioned at the beginning, I missed a, a fairly big entry into the Wizarding World of Harry Potter from Prisoner of Azkaban, and that is the other attraction that is in Hogsmeade. It is Flight of the Hippogriff. It is a uh, smaller coaster, not, not really a kid coaster, but not, a, not like the Dragon Challenge was or like the Incredible Hulk, anything like that. Of course, the Hippogriff was introduced in the Prisoner of Azkaban with Buck Beef, Buckbeak, the hippogriff, um, and you do see an animatronic of Buckbeak on the attraction. You in the queue, you walk by Hagrid's hut, which is very cool. Um, but I figured I should mention that since I forgot last time we did this. So, um, I did link those two podcasts I below. Saw it, thank you. Um, with Brian and I uh, have a podcast out with Fred Hazelton, who is a data scientist for Touring Plans, and we talked about kind of what to expect or what we are predicting for Toy Story Land crowds. And then I also put the latest um, Harry Potter coaster that mm -hmm. Len and Jim talked about on their podcast. So uh, those are linked yeah. below. Okay. So, so one thing I found weird with, and, and I, this is another thing that I understand why they made the choice, but in the movie, um, Bobatons only brings girls and Doomstrang only has boys. And it's kind of made to seem like those are all girls and all boys schools. Mm -hmm. um, and it took me a while, but there is a line in the book where somebody discusses meeting a Bobatons boy in Hogsmeade. So in the book, there are, there are, it isn't just a girl's it's, school. It, yeah. Um, because I wasn't sure because the shows at, at Universal are all girls and all boys for the, the boy area schools. Um, and I was thinking, wait, is that how it is? That seems weird that there's only one school in France and it's only for girls. But So they made the decision yeah. for the movie to mm -hmm. make it one gender. Uh, yeah, I, I suppose. Which, you know, I mean, the, the champions from those are of that gender. And I guess they just figured, well, you know, just to make just them do different. Just do one in one. Yeah. yeah. Um, well, let's talk about those unforgivable curses since mm -hmm. I did mention it and then I said we'd talk about it. So there are three. I'm drinking out of my Hufflepuff, Hufflepuff cuff, cup today. Do you today. have one for Rest every house? I do. Rest in peace, Cedric Diggory. Yeah. Yeah. Did you did you choose that in honor of him? Of course. Um, also, John said that time setting in Hogsmeade has become less strict, especially with the dragon yeah. challenge being gone. Yeah. So yeah, he he touched on what you did. And Mary Ellen said our grandchildren will love this. Please share this with them, Mary Ellen. That would be oh, great. Oh, she will. Mary Ellen is my aunt. So. Oh, that's so nice <laughs> that she's watching. <laughs> um, and John said, so why do you think they presented it that way at Universal Orlando and the movies? Do you think that's because the park kind of opened around that? Maybe like they started with the idea and started putting together well, around I think that time. I think that when they were just, I, I think as far as why the park did it was because they were just looking for shows for the movie. As we said, they do a frog choir, which is from the Prisoner of Azkaban, mm -hmm. and they do this now from Goblet of Fire. So I think that was just around the time period they were looking for things to fill out the Wizarding World. And yeah. because of those entrances and because they're so dynamic in the movie, they figured, oh, well, that's there. We can do that as a show. That'll be yeah. great. Um, why they made the choice for the movie, I don't exactly know. I think, um, I think they were just, I, I, I think, like I said, it, it took me a while to find any mention of, a, of a, another sex at one of the schools. Yeah. I think for Durmstrang, they only mentioned boys. Mm -hmm. So it's not a huge leap to think that it's mostly girls for Bobatons and mostly, if not all boys for Durmstrang. And they probably just figure, well, again, it's just more visually appealing if they're, if the Bobatons girls are in really flowy, like dress like things and the Durmstrang East, you know, West Eastern European 
are big, strong, kind of, you know, burly men and things like yeah. that. So. And it makes for that presentation mm -hmm. um, when they walk in, which I did think I always, from the very beginning, when Durmstrang came in, I'm a drummer. So, like, when it comes to rhythm and beats, yeah. I just, I don't know. I think it's really cool. So, I love. It is. And the show, you know, that part, the, the show is actually pretty cool that they do with, with those. You should, uh, if you happen to see it, it's not worth, like, going out of your way for. To I wouldn't, like, oh, I wouldn't we prioritize it over it. something yeah. else. But if you happen to see it going on, like, it is, it is pretty cool. And, and I agree. I think the Durham string part is better than the. Because the, the the Belvatons part is is kind of just like ribbon dancing, and it, they're very yeah. good. The, the dancers are very good, but it doesn't have the same uh, impact that like the, the banging of the sticks, and, like, the banging yeah. of the sticks that like yeah. shoot sparks out. It's just a little yeah. more impressive than like them France, sighing and posing. France scored. If anyone else is watching the World Cup, I have it on. That's why I keep looking that way. If anyone's wondering, <laughs> was it the Bobatons that scored? I don't know. I didn't see who scored, but yeah. Um, so unforgivable curses. So these yes. are curses that if you use them, um, you know, basically the they use make of, it sound like you're a bad person. The use they say the use of any one of them is worth a life sentence in Azkaban. So serious yes. stuff. Uh, Harry, of course, will go on to use two of them in future books. So. But times change. <laughs> yeah. So Harry, I, he gets off with not even a slap on the wrist, but that's because the times change. But yeah, so. Um, there is the cruci Cruciatus Curse. Yep. Yep. And which is torture. Torture. Pain, there is, yeah. there's what? There's Cruciatus, the, why can't I think of the second Imperio, one? Imperio, the Imperius Imper Curse. The Imperius Curse, which like controls your mind. Mm -hmm. And then there's Avada Kedavra, which is the killing the curse. The killing curse. Which only one known, only one person has been known to survive it. And he's sitting yeah. in front of me. Yeah. That's one of those yep. lines that always stuck with me in the books. And that so, was and actually, the movie, they say it in the film too. That scene was actually kind of like, I, I don't want to say meaningful, but like it left an impression yeah. because it started out as very, like almost, almost lighthearted because, yeah. you know, they start out with this spider and then Mad-Eye Moody kind of like uses the spider as an example and does the curses on the spider to make it like go on people and float around the room. And it's all goofy and the kids are laughing and freaking out. And then he's like, well, should I make the spider drown itself or jump out the window? And then everyone gets really serious. And then you kind of understand how grave yeah. and serious and not funny the situation is. So it definitely leaves an impression uh, with the kids. And then, yeah, yeah you just you realize, and, like, this is and serious. I don't, I don't think it's an accident that it's, it's, one, it's one of the scenes that um, is pulled very, very closely from the book. Because it, mm -hmm. it, it is, it's a very lasting scene in the book. Like I said, I mean, I, I the, you know, the, the, uh, the, when he talks about the Imperius curse and, you know, total control and it, it's, it's creepy, it's weird. Um, and then when you realize later that that's not actually Alistair Moody, it seems even stranger. Actually, I think, and I, I think in the movie, um, the Moody reacts better than in the books in the books he's almost um you know he really is tr seemingly trying to teach the the kids and he cares about them when he does the the cruciatus curse on the spider uh he realizes that it's it's affecting neville in the film yeah. Herm hermione has to tell him to stop because it's it's like bothering neville we find out later that is because neville's parents were uh tortured into insanity using the Cruciatus Curse by Death Eaters, uh, a group of which included Barty Crouch Sr. Or Junior, I'm sorry, not Sr. Um, so um, that's why seeing that really, really impacted Neville. Uh, the same way that, that seeing the Killing Curse impacts Harry because he finally realizes what he's been seeing a green flash since, mm -hmm. he, was, since he was little. He's been seeing a green flash in his dreams and he didn't know why. And now he knows why. That's what the Killing Curse looks like. So, um, but in the, in the book, Moody is because because it's such a secret in the book that this is not Alistair Moody. Um, they, I, I think it's a little bit overwritten in where she's trying to make it seem where the death eater, Barty Crouch Jr. Wouldn't necessarily care about any of the students. And I think that comes across more in the movie that he's just kind of a, an insane person. But really, I mean, the fact that he kind of makes that point, like, 
I mean, it's kind of a good teaching moment. Like, Barty Pat is. Jr. Yeah. really wasn't a bad teacher. No, he seemed pretty good, actually. As, yeah, as and a, the fact... He's their he second like, best how, defense against the dark arts teacher so far. He really was. I know. <laughs> like, when it comes to the, what, the four years that yeah. Harry's been in school, he teaches and, them things that they needed to know. And, I mean, spoiler alert, he's going to be in the top three over the six years that they're at school. Yeah, so, he really will. You know. So I'm kind of, I'm kind of impressed, <clears throat> really. Yeah. Um, and just like, you know, even he helps Neville help Harry and he kind of like, he really kind of aids well, in that, we, the whole Well, that, we tournament. find out why he's helping Harry We know why, on, but, but yeah. really, it's well done. Like his, even if it is manipulation, like I'm impressed with his teaching skills overall. Even though um, it's for evil. Yeah, all right, so... <laughs> So the, um, we should probably move. We've been doing this 40 minutes already, so we should yeah, probably okay. start moving. We, we, we only got like always, 20 more. I, I tried to cut down my notes as much as possible, knowing that we never get through all of them. And I still, we, I, I still can't. Um, we talked too much. <coughs> all right. So yeah, we still the have second, like five points. The, 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 honestly, the second challenge isn't, isn't super important. Um, so we can probably skip that. There's a couple other scenes that happen in the movie. As we said, there's a lot of stuff introduced in this port key, the idea of a port key, which is um, basically something that will teleport you to another, another preset place. That's how they get to the, the World Cup. That's what happens with the, the Triwizard Cup when, when Harry and Cedric touch it. Um, we will see those again. The Room of Requirement, this is not in the film. No, not the book, at all. Um, in the book, uh, Harry... Uh, and, and we will see the room of requirement in the next movie, mm -hmm. but uh, it is first mentioned in the book and it's not, not by that name, but Dumbledore um, tells a, a story that Harry is, is listening to about finding a bathroom that um, he didn't know existed and hasn't been able to find since we find out later that is the room of requirement, which we'll talk mm -hmm. more about next time. Mm -hmm. um, the pensive will be uh, play a really big part in the sixth book and movie. Um, the Half Blood Prince. So, and I, I don't know. I I believe in the movie they call it the Pensive, but yeah. um, I but I'm not like sure. I well, just because the word sieve is an existing word, so that just may be a difference in pronunciation between uh, the Brits and and Americans, um, or I could be saying it wrong. But I, that's one of the words I always read as pensive. So I'm probably going to keep saying that. Um, and then let's see, I'm sorry, I'm just trying to skip a lot. Oh, the Yule Ball. Yeah, okay. um, I, personally, if I was writing the screenplay, I would have cut the entire Yule Ball. All of it. You, it is, you can't do that, though. It is 14 minutes. But the only thing we learn in it is that Ron likes Hermione, which I feel like there's another way to go about without spending 14 minutes of a two and a half hour movie. <laughs> Um, well, you know what they could have done? They could have shortened the Yule Ball and expanded the Quidditch World Cup. That's exactly what I, that's what what I would have, have preferred. Or, or added more of the Barty Crouch Jr. stuff. Um, Dobby appears in the book, does not appear in the movies. Mm -hmm. Basically, the part um, where Harry's in the library and, and Neville helps him by telling him about the gillyweed, that is Dobby that does it in the book. That's, mm -hmm. that's the only difference. That, again, I understand you don't want to spend that money. <laughs> I'm making yeah. Dobby again when you can just have somebody else do it. Yeah, like a real um, person. And then, um, so, all right, let's just jump to the third task in the end because this is oh, all very, very important, unless you have something else you want to mention. Well, I want to catch up on comments. Oh, too. Yeah, oh yes, please. John wants to know if you're drinking from your cuffle puff cup, are you closer to the kitchen today? Are you closer to the kitchen? I mean, the kitchen is right behind me through that door, so, I okay. mean, technically, yeah, I guess. Okay, okay. Um, and then he said, as far as the shows at Universal Orlando, which is good information for me, they're great to fill middle of the day during busy time. However, they're using fewer team members in the shows now. Um, that's good for me because I'm sure that I am going to have some downtime because we're mainly just doing the Harry Potter portion. We are mm -hmm. going to explore the rest of Universal Orlando, although I'm looking at the forecast and it looks like we're going to have rain. I know that Florida rain showers don't last too long, but still. I mean, that's a bit of a bummer for me. Um, Joanna d d agrees that the Durham string routine was great and the flips and the rhythm mm -hmm. and everything is just really well done. Hi, Michelle Hertz McNichols, who just joined. That, one, that one's my wife. So. <laughs> Hi, Michelle. Um, uh, John said the dark arts teacher is the equivalent to wearing a red shirt in the original <laughs> yes, Star Trek. <laughs> very much so, yeah. 
Uh, yeah, he, to the point also, that they, to the point that later in the books, they actively hope one of their defense against the dark arts teachers will uh, go the way of Quirrell and die. So, <laughs> and one of one of the upcoming ones too. Well, yeah. Oh, the the next one we get a real bad data teacher. So, yeah, oh, that's true. <laughs> uh, and he agreed about the Yule Ball for the movie, but it is a beloved part and one of the most yeah. requested things to add. It oh, is by it's, Universal it's, guests. It's a lot of background charm stuff that I do generally like. Um, I think they just spent a little too much time on it in in the movie. It be, being that it was already such a long movie, and it, and the, the last half hour of this movie is so important to the story going forward. I would have rather them flush that out a little bit more than just seeing um, than just seeing the the kids dance to the weird sisters, you know. But you know what? Again, thinking like a kid, and specifically thinking like a girl. You know, some girls might want to see that part and see how mm -hmm. Hermione, you know, gets all like yeah. shiny and nice hair and stuff and want to see the dancing. Which is another thing that's a change. In the, in the book, Hermione is always portrayed as not super attractive. And um, like how her hair is all like poofy and blah, It's blah, very blah. poofy and she has big buck teeth uh, yeah. until a certain point. Um, in, that, uh, and then, in, of course, in the movie, it's Emma Watson, who is always adorable. So Yeah, so like that was not portrayed. <coughs> oh, and John, I get your comment now. Hufflepuff common room is closest to the kitchen. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I, no, I, I, I mean, I, I... That did I not did. click for me in your comment. I'm sorry. I, I um, assume that, but I actually wasn't 100% sure of that. So I didn't want to say it and be wrong. I even had like most of this coffee and it did not connect. Holly made a really good point. She said, expand the maze scene. And add the Sphinx. Yes, the Sphinx. I know. Okay, so so while we're while we're on there, the third task. In the book, the third task. It's the same thing. It's the the giant hedge maze, except that it is full of other stuff. Now Harry doesn't encounter a lot of that stuff, as we find out later. That he doesn't that, really do anything. Yeah. Well, as we find out later, Mad Eye Moody. Um, gets rid of a lot of the stuff that is in Harry's path in, in the book. In the movie, there's nothing in his path. It's literally just the bushes attacking you, I guess. I, yeah. I don't know. It doesn't make a ton of sense. Again, I, th I feel like it was just a money thing. Um, we meet the uh, in the, the book, he, he sees a blast-ended scroot, which is a weird, weird-sounding creature that is in the book only that, of course, Hagrid loves. Um, mm -hmm. There is an acromantula, the giant spiders. There is the sphinx, which would have been if they were only going to do one. I would have also chosen the oh, sphinx. Yeah. That would have been sphinx, the, sphinx awesome. would have been great to say. That would be so cool um, to see. There's a weird mist that turns everything upside down when Harry walks into it. Uh, there's a lot of really really cool stuff that they could have done, and I assume it was budgetary or graphics related that they didn't do it. Maybe but time. it was. It's too bad. Like they, I really wish they could have. And it, it brings up an interesting point because we find out later on that the the triwizard cup was turned into a port key so the first person to touch it was going to get zapped to this graveyard where wormtail would then bring voldemort back uh it was supposed to be harry that's why mad eye was helping them all along um so two questions one why couldn't mad eye just make a pencil in his office a port key and say harry can you hand me that pencil yeah, um, that seems like it would have been way easier than this whole yeah, production. Yeah, why is it a big production where like yeah. it had to be coordinated for this big event? Again, I, I love J.K. Rowling, and I think she has written seven amazing books, but she does tend to overwrite some of her plots. Um, but it made for a better story, Brian. It is. It's, it's a great drama. story. Yeah, and, and I, 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 I love The Goblet of Fire. I'm not complaining about it, but that, it does seem a little silly. But two, the way it's portrayed in the movie where there's really nothing in the way – what happened if Cedric just grabbed the cup first? Like, would Voldemort would have just been like, ah, all right, let's start over, I guess. Yeah, like, like plan just, B. Because there wasn't, there wasn't as much to get rid of. Now, he did put the Imperious Curse on Crumb, um, which is another weird choice they made in the movie where his eyes go all glazed. Yeah. Because they specifically say earlier in the movie that you can't tell who's under the Imperious Curse. So that's what makes it so hard to determine whether people Which are doing it themselves. in yeah. like the last movie yeah. too. And yet you can clearly tell that Crumb is under the Imperious Curse, which I thought was a strange 
a strange choice. But it adds by to them. the creepiness and the scariness. Oh, it, it, well, it does, and it, and it, I, it makes you think that oh, Crumb's not a bad guy, which you know we're kind of assuming the whole time anyway. Especially in the book, they make him out to be a perfectly normal, actually kind of shy person, c- considering he's an international Quidditch superstar. Yeah. Um, so he's actually very lovable in the book, uh, more so even than in the movie. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, I, I, so, so go ahead. I've been talking for, for way too long. So do you have anything you want to say about the third task before we get to Voldemort? And, or do no, you want to just jump into Voldemort? No, I've kind of been interrupting as we've been talking about it as far as, you know, the maze scene is actually relatively boring in comparison yeah. To, you know, the dragon scene and other things that we've seen during the movie. It's just very, like, uh, someone else put it, I think maybe Danya or someone, very underwhelming. Yeah, and I, mm-hmm. You know, you're just kind of, you know, Fleur, get, Fleur gets attacked by Crumb. Cedric, I think he, like, runs through the attacking bu- uh, maze bushes very quickly. Um, Harley said, it's just like Megamind said, the difference between a villain and a supervillain is presentation. I was just going to read that. That's a great comment. And yeah, you're right. I mean, it is I, another movie series I love is the, the James Bond series, which is all like that. I mean, every villain could have done his plan way easier, but um, it is. It's just, you know, something to do. And Holly has a good point here that if Harry had just disappeared during the school year, it would have been much harder to explain. Uh, which I agree with, except that it seems like Barty Crouch Jr. didn't really care if he got out alive. Um, which, again, for the book, he didn't. Well, technically he did. He gets his soul sucked out by a Dementor at the end of the book, um, yeah. which he does not do in the in the movie. But um, So, all right, well... While while I'm, I'm monologuing here, I, I want let's go into the, the what the story is of Barty Crouch Jr. in the book. Well, I just want to point out first that if mm-hmm. I were a villain, I would have the worst anxiety ever because <laughs> think about think about not because I'd feel like a bad person because if I were a villain, I'd be a villain, so I wouldn't feel bad. But just think about it. You you create these elaborate plans, and all of these steps and all of these plans have to go according to plan for it to be pulled off. And I would just be like so worried that like, oh, what if what if this doesn't go right? What if this doesn't mm-hmm. go right? Like what if Cedric touches the port key and Harry doesn't? And then I just have Cedric and no Harry and all these Death Eaters are here <laughs> that I've already summoned. And like, you know, yeah. I have Cedric. It's just I would have the worst anxiety. But yes. Okay, well, and to- actually that, that's, that's approached a little bit, bit in later books when some of the Death Eaters do become terrified to call Voldemort. Yeah. If they don't have what he wants, I mean, you or if know, they so, do, yeah, and they escape and they mess and, up, yeah, which happens yeah. a lot. Um, but so Barty Crouch Jr. in the book, uh, it's it's much more complicated, but I think in a good way in this in, in this instance, um, Barty Crouch was sent to Azkaban by his father, mm-hmm. um, but then uh, his mother actually convinces Barty Senior to get him out of Azkaban again. So they devise a plan where the mother, who, is, who is, has a terminal illness, takes Polyjuice Potion and impersonates Barty Jr., and they switch places. And mm-hmm. Barty Sr. takes Barty Jr. home and forces him, by using the Imperious Curse, to wear an invisibility cloak at 24 hours a day. He is being looked over by the house elf Winky, um, Winky eventually talks Barty Sr. into letting Junior go to the Quidditch World Cup. Uh, when the Weasleys and Harry and Hermione go to the top box at the Quidditch World Cup, behind the row behind them, Winky the elf is sitting there with an empty seat next to her that she said she is saving for Barty Sr. Um, and it turns out that she's not. That is actually Junior sitting under the invisibility cloak mm-hmm. watching the World Cup because he, he loved Quidditch. He steals Harry's wand during that time. Um, Harry, Ron, and Hermione, the, the, the entire scene where the Death Eaters attack goes differently in the book. So Harry, Ron, and Hermione are separated. They're in the woods. They see Winky, the elf, dragging something across the um, a clearing, which turns out to be Junior. Um, the, he get, takes this wand that he has, uses it to, to, uh, do the Mas Madra spell, the, uh, the, the, um, dark mark spell like he does mm-hmm. in the movie. 
when all the wizards appear and do the stunning spells, they hit both Junior and Winky. Winky is found, and Crouch Sr. dismisses her immediately, then goes into the woods and realizes that his son is there under the invisibility cloak. Um, but doing all of that, uh, there's, uh, it actually goes deeper than that, but to, to shorten this a little bit, Voldemort finds out that that Crouch Jr. is is around and willing to serve. So he and Wormtail go to Crouch Sr.'s house, put Crouch Sr. under the Imperious Curse, and release Barty Crouch Jr. to do this whole thing. So at the end, um, it is very much a surprise because everybody thinks that Barty Crouch Jr. is dead. They think mm-hmm. he died in Azkaban when it was really his mother that died looking like him. Mm-hmm. Um, so that is why no one sees sees this coming, and at the end, yes, they um, they the they, uh, Dementors come and give him the kiss and steal his soul rather than just take him back to Azkaban, which is a much darker way. But the the book actually ends darker. But I'll I'll talk about that again in a minute because I don't want to keep and, going here. And that's why exact that's exactly why this book is so long because of mm-hmm. that that's just a sample of the kind of details that you get in the book which is why if you've only seen the movies i really highly suggest yeah. reading the books or listening to them because so many and, people are in love with harry potter just for the films yeah but they don't even know the half of it with the book details and honestly if you if if it's a, a timing time issue and you don't you know you can honestly start at the third or fourth one and go forward because i would the third one um, third one is just is just very good. The fourth yeah. book, The Goblet of Fire, is where it really starts to set up the end game for for later. Um, I mean, obviously, I would recommend reading or listening to all the the books because I I do love them. But um, you could technically start at Goblet of Fire if you've seen mm-hmm. the movies and go forward from there and not really miss that much. So okay. all right, so now we're in. The Sorry, graveyard I was looking at with- a sheet. Yes, because it's almost, well, for you, it's almost noon. So, yeah, let's mm-hmm. do the, the graveyard scene. Um, very pretty long in the book, like most of these scenes. Yeah. Um, so Cedric is killed. It's just very shocking to Harry because it's just he's there and then he's not. And it's something that Harry processes for a long time because he just mm-hmm. can't understand that it's only because he was there. There was no other reason for him to die. It's yep. because he was just there. And kill, that was- kill the spare is another one of those lines that is haunting you know, in Harry, both the book and the movie. Harry has been through things up until this point, but this is the, this is truly the loss of his innocence. Yeah, it really is. Like he this really, is- he went through something that really, he lost his innocence in this form, just seeing someone murdered right next to him for no reason at all. Cedric is the first really significant death to the audience as well. Um, you know, we've heard of other people dying. I mean, even in this in this book and movie, Barty Crouch Sr. is found is found dead. Um, again, in the book, we don't actually know for sure he's dead until the end, but mm-hmm. um, in the movie, you certainly do. And... Um, yeah, but it, this is the first one I, I feel like that really, really hits hard, and it, it won't be the last. Um, and, the, you know. <laughs> and then you know, it's you kind of get this. It, you know, it, the darkness continues as far as Harry is kind of mm-hmm. tied up, and he is used as a sacrifice in a way yeah. to bring Voldemort back. And you really kind of wonder, you know, is he going to make it out of this? And then he's forced to duel Voldemort. Being 14 years old, having very little knowledge of dueling or magic at all, really. He's, you know, he's 14. Mm. And then on top of it all, their wands connect, which is a magic neither (laughs) of them know anything about. No, No, even Voldemort is surprised by that. Yeah. And Cedric, you see Cedric, he talks to Harry. Harry's parents talk to Harry. And it's just... Yeah, it's just very, it's very emotional and it's very meaningful and it's confusing because you're wondering what's happening. And yeah. yeah, going forward, especially in the next book, Harry really goes through some, he goes through a time, you know? It's, yeah, puberty. Um, but, and it's uh, not just that, but just <laughs> the processing of everything. And then it yeah. even gets harder in the sixth book and 
this is just the beginning of some really troubling times for him. Yeah, there are there there are dangerous times ahead. Wasn't that they? Uh, I forget. There was one of the lines that I don't remember was this movie or the next one that. Dumbledore says a line that is something, you know, there are tough times ahead, Harry. And they actually used it on the posters and everything. Like, it was basically yeah. to tell you, like, oh, this isn't getting better. Like, if, like, you're, if you're squeamish about it, you know. Buckle up. Yeah. But yeah, it um, was very emotional. But his parents were and, there. and Yeah, which it is, again, you know, mild spoiler, not the last time that's going to happen for him. Um, yeah, you know, they got to talk to him. The, the dead being with you past their, their living shell is something that, that J.K. Rowling goes back to quite a bit, which, um, mm-hmm. which I, I personally uh, agree with and, and enjoy. So, um, you know, I mean, we, we talked about a little bit with Prisoner of Azkaban where, you know, his father is part of him. That's why his Patronus is a stag. And, you know, this is just more proof that, that they are still there, you know, sort of within. Now this time wasn't really within him. It was within Voldemort's the, wand. The wand. Yeah. Um, but she but, pushes past the death being with you and incorporates magic into it where the dead can then talk to Harry. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. So it's, it's, it's a very good scene, very impactful, very scary, I guess. But then anyway, so the, they get distracted by the dead people and Harry uses that opportunity to grab Cedric's body and grab the port mm-hmm. key and return back to Hogwarts. Now, the reason that they, um, the reason that the, the wands joined, which they don't actually explain in the movie, but it's because they share a core. Each mm-hmm. wand is... Um, has a magical core at the middle. Harry's wand is Phoenix Feather, so is Voldemort's. It happens that those two feathers came from the same Phoenix, uh, which we find out is Fox, Dumbledore's Phoenix. And he gave only two feathers, two wands, and it was both of those two. And when you have, when you share a core with another wand, they are, you know, they, they refer to them as brothers. And the wands do not like to fight each other then. And when they force them to, that's why mm-hmm. they joined. And um, they continued to force them to fight. And that's why the priori incantatum, which is, you know, revealing previous spells that the wand has done, happened to Voldemort's. So that's why his past few murders came back. So yeah, yeah. It's just... But which will it is I, I do find a little weird that they didn't at least briefly explain that um, because yes, John says they do foreshadow that in, in book one. They do say uh, Ollivander does tell him that mm-hmm. the, the phoenix gave one other feather and it was to Voldemort's wand. Um, I. I'm not sure when it might be in Goblet of Fire that we find out that it was Fox for the Phoenix actually. But, um, but I, I find it a little weird that they didn't mention the twin cores just because uh, ultimately it, it causes Voldemort to go looking for other ones and one other one in particular, which becomes a story in the last book. So, well, and John did say that we kind of get that for- foreshadowing in book one, yeah. which is when Harry goes to get his wand from Al- Ollivander and he says, mm-hmm. you know, your wands are connected, yeah. one other wand, blah, blah, blah. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, that's where we at. That's where we're at. Do we have anything else? Just um, Yeah, we kind of talked about the end. We talked about the, the, the wands being connected, how Barty Crutch – Junior, they say he goes to Azkaban. No, he he gets his soul sucked out. Spoiler. Yeah, which which in the movie I thought is weird that they just kind of say like you know tell Azkaban that you know they're missing a prisoner, which they never go back. Like it, Azk- I mean they they make a big deal that Sirius Black is the first and only person that's ever escaped from Azkaban, and then this time they're like, oh, someone else escaped, I guess. Yeah, <laughs> like I it know. just they're, they're just like, oh, but- okay. I know, um, like Azkaban, this is like your only wizarding prison. Can you please do your yeah. job a little better? Um, but the end, I just want to talk about the end a little bit from the book. Um, in the movie, they, they try to end it a little bit on a happier note with uh, the students of the different schools all saying goodbye and Hermione telling Ron and Harry that she, you know, they have to write to her you know, over the summer. And um, the book continues to end very, very darkly. It ends mm-hmm. actually in the hospital wing with... Um, you know, the Harry telling the, the story or he had, has previously told the story about uh, what happened in the graveyard. 
uh, Cornelius Fudge, the Minister of Magic, comes in and says that Barty Crouch Jr. is raving. He's saying that Voldemort's back, and Dumbledore and Harry are saying he is back, and and Fudge basically saying, you know, bull, uh, I don't believe it, which will become a very big story in the next in the, mm-hmm. the next film and, and book. Um, and then Sirius reveals himself as still being around. Him and Snape hate each other. Snape is sent back to be a spy with Voldemort in the book, which again will become very important. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, the, it, it's basically set up to, they, they set up in that last chapter in the book, everything that will come forward. It, it's, it's Dumbledore already activating what will be known as the Order of the Phoenix, which is the title of the next book and movie. Which is both a good movie and a good book. Well, the disagree, book, but book, okay. <laughs> no, I say the movie. Yeah, the book is I, just okay. A it's little... it's a it's a okay, good movie and a good out... book. It is not. I, I. It is my least favorite book. Um, okay. I don't know I will... about movie. I have lots of problems with the movie, but you know, if you that's... take out Harry's lines, I like the story. <laughs> I like yeah. the whole Order of the Phoenix part of it. Yeah, but, but we'll, out, we'll talk a lot about that. In, yeah, in, take out in Harry's the, angst. It's pretty good. I like the story. Two weeks or so, yeah. Yeah, but that will be July. Oh, my gosh, so July 9th. So the next time I talk to you yeah. guys about Harry Potter, I will have been to the Wizarding World of Harry Potter. I will have been to both sides, both parks. So, again, if you have anything you'd like me to film while I'm there, please let me know. Um, I hope to do, I won't be able to do a Facebook live next week, but I will get back to doing our Disney ones. Eventually this has been a very crazy month for me. Um, but in July I will do the Disney ones and yeah, I think, I think we're done here, Brian. I think so. Yeah. Thank you so much for joining us. We will upload this to YouTube and we'll see you next time. Thank you. Bye-bye.